Hey everyone, what we're going to look at today is how to turn 360 degree video into a dome master video that we can project onto a planetarium dome or some other type of dome screen like that. So what I've got here is just some 360 video that I recorded a while back of some firemen doing a car extraction and we're going to use this as an example. Right now we're watching the video in what's called an echo rectangular projection. And this is basically taking 360 video and flattening it out. So if we were to wrap this back around into a 360 sphere, this right edge over here would meet up perfectly with the left edge and the poles would squish in together. And you'd be able to look around as if you were sitting here in the passenger seat of this car. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to be using Adobe After Effects for this and I'm using the latest version of After Effects CC 2019 version 16.0.1. And this is because uh, the latest versions of After Effects have some really great 360 tools that make this task pretty simple. So what we're going to do is just import, import our footage into After Effects. And here we have it. And we're just going to create a new composition with this footage by dragging it onto the New Composition button. And here we go. We've got our composition ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, this is pretty long footage and we don't need to see the, all of it. Um, and so what we're going to do is apply a built-in effect, uh, built into After Effects, to convert this from echo rectangular to a full dome image. And let's go ahead and jump up to the effects menu. And there's an option here that says immersive video and an effect called VR converter. And I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see that not much happens right away, and, but that's because we need to tell the VR converter what the input type is and what the output type of video is. So we know that the input is echo rectangular, as I said before, it's a two by one aspect ratio rectangle. And we will know that we want our output to be a full dome output, which also happens to be a fisheye output. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Now the first thing that you'll notice, it's uh, converted this to a fisheye image or circular fisheye image. So you can see that we're only getting 180 degrees of this image instead of the full 360 that we were before. And by default, uh, the camera is pointed directly at the front of that image. So let's go ahead and undo what I just did real quick. And you can see that that front area is right in the center of the frame here. And it just keeps that same with the full dome. And um, basically what this means is that this horizon line will pass right over the zenith of the dome. And when we're composing an image for the dome, we know that the dome uh, itself goes over your head. And so the sweet spot or the natural viewing area is actually going to be down in the front part of the dome here because the front edge of, the dome, of this image is where is the front of the dome itself. The top of this image is the back of the dome, and left is left and right is right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to bring this horizon down to a natural horizon line in this front viewing area. And I'll demonstrate why this is important in just a little bit. But to do this, we're going to use the reorient camera view settings. So let's go ahead and twirl that open. And the first setting we have here is a tilt setting. And if I go ahead and just increase this by clicking and dragging, you can see that it tilts the camera up and brings that horizon down. And if we brought it all the way to 90 degrees, so let's go ahead and punch that in, you can see now that the horizon out there, which you can't see too well, but that's because it's right at the edge of this image. And that's with the camera essentially pointed straight up. And for a flat dome, this might be an ideal uh, viewing scenario. However, I know that in the dome that I work in, our dome is actually tilted in front of the audience at about 20 degrees. And so what I usually do is at, take that 90, and if you subtract 20 degrees from that, you'll get 70. And so we can set that there. And now this gives you a nice horizon line about 20 degrees above the bottom of the image. And again, right now, you might think that this horizon looks really curved. However, as you'll see in just a little bit, um, when you project this up onto the dome, 
that horizon will appear flat. All right. So the next thing uh, that I want to talk about really quickly is this field of view control. You can see that right now it's set at 180 degrees. And that is how much image, how much field of view of this image is up on the dome. And 180 degrees is kind of the default natural option. Um, as you can imagine, a dome being a hemisphere contains about 180 degrees of information. However, you can exaggerate this to get more of the image up onto the dome screen. Now, if you do this too much, what you'll run into is some distorted looking images, especially if you have tall straight elements like trees or buildings, those things will start to bend inwards if you increase this value too much. So if I go ahead and increase this just a bit by clicking and dragging, you can see what happens. Essentially, it's pushing more of that image up onto the dome, which for this particular shot is actually pretty useful uh, because of the close con confines of this image. And uh, my general rule of thumb is I usually don't go above about 210 degrees. Um, going above that tends to really uh, get you distorted, curved uh, lines that should be straight. And so usually I don't go above that, but again, this is uh, can be um, based on the image as well as just your personal judgment. And the best way to test this is just to output multiple versions and take it into a dome and see what it feels like. All right, so now that we have our image here at 210 degrees, tilted forward at 70 degrees, um, and again, this tilt is uh, sort of arbitrary as well. Um, you can kind of play with this and see what feels right, especially if you actually want the audience to be kind of looking in a more downward facing direction. Um, almost forcing them to be tilted forward, um, you can do that as well. So I'm going to set this actually at about 60 degrees. Again, just due to the nature of this shot, I really want to be able to see more of what's below the, the horizon line here. All right. And the next control that I'm going to talk about is another reorient camera view control. It's the next one down here, and it's the pan. And you can probably guess what this does. If we increase the value here, you can see that it rotates the camera to the left and we can pan all the way around as if we were in a, a VR headset or an interactive 360 player um, but of course this is uh, setting this value and then you're rendering this, this setting out. So let's say I wanted to start the shot at the very beginning facing forward so we're gonna go ahead and push put 90 in here so you can see now uh, everyone in the dome will feel kind of like they're in the passenger seat of this car facing forward out of the windshield which has already been cut out. And let's say um, down the line I want to be facing over to this fireman to see what he's doing with, his, with the jaws of life there to get pry open that door. Um, but I want to start here and then end up over here. So to do that I'm going to use keyframes and keyframes uh, basically allow you to change the value of something over time in After Effects. So I'm going to click the stopwatch to enable keyframes on this pan aspect. And if I go ahead and click on my footage down here in the composition and hit the U key on the keyboard, that will open up my keyframes. And you can see I've got one little keyframe, this little diamond here. And let's go ahead and jump forward a bit and set another keyframe by clicking on the add keyframe button here. And that's just gonna keep this value at 90. So 90 to 90, no change, no rotation you can see. And let's go a little bit farther and say over the next four seconds, I want it to rotate over to the right here. So I'm gonna decrease this value and you can see it rotates over to the right. And let's say that's good. And let's go ahead and preview that. So we'll go ahead and hit the space to preview. And you can see it's not moving. And then, boom, we're moving over. And now we're checking out what he's doing. And let's stay there for a while. Let's see, let's scroll down. Let's stay there for a few seconds here. Add another keyframe again just at the same value as the previous one, so it's not going to move. 
And let's go ahead and turn around and see what these other firemen are doing. So let's go ahead and increase this value to see what these guys are up to over here. And let's preview this. And we'll turn around. And see what these guys are doing. Cool. So if we go ahead and then preview this from the very beginning. Let's see what he's doing over here, prime the door open. I like when that glass pops out there, it's pretty fun. And then we'll whip around here. Now these pans are probably a bit too fast for a dome environment. Um, if you've ever been in a dome, you know that it, any motion really um, gets kind of amplified and uh, can make you a little bit sick. One thing that I might do to um, ease this a little bit is actually just turn these uh, into, use the keyframe assistant to do some easy easing. And we'll just turn those all into eased keyframes. And what that's going to do is instead of such abrupt movements at the start and end, that'll kind of give us some smoother stops and starts there, so that's much better. And once this starts, you'll see it starts a little bit slower and then slows down at the end there. So it's really quite noticeable in the first transition here. There we go. All right, so there's how to convert 360 footage into full dome. And what's nice about this camera reorient is that as a producer, you can choose where the front of the dome will be pointing. Um, so you can tell your story in various ways doing that. And so what I wanna show you now is just a preview uh, of what this dome image will look like on a virtual dome. So to do this, I'm just going to output this frame, just a frame from this video, as an image. So I'm going to go to Composition, Save Frame as File, and let's go ahead and change this to JPEG. And we'll just call this Test Frame. Render that out. Okay. So we've got our test frame here. As you can see, it's still this circular image. And I've got a program on here called Blendy Dome, um, which is a really useful program for, um, for previewing dome content as well as uh, mapping domes themselves. So basically hooking up multiple projectors to a computer and uh, mapping those images to the dome surface. So you can see we've got our dome here. Um, right now we're facing south, which in this case, in this simulation, is the front of the dome. So you can see our axis over here. Um, and what we can do is just preview this content by dragging it onto the virtual dome here. And if we zoom in so that we're sort of in the virtual dome, um, you can kind of see what this looks like. So as I said before, once you project this onto the curved dome, that horizon, let's go ahead and look at that again that looked like it was curving down here actually ends up being a nice flat natural horizon and you can see that the audience can look all around themselves um, and see that they are in the passenger seat of this this vehicle all right so that's turning echo rectangular footage into a dome master thanks